Okay. Hello, here is Bruno Kaufmann. I'm the global democracy correspondent for the Swiss broadcasting company. I'm in Canberra today together with Professor Ron Levy from the Australian National University. Uh, Ron, uh, Australia just experienced uh, historic days uh, regarding an important issue. Can you tell us about that? Well, um, we've had a plebiscite, a uh, vote that um, was preceded by two months of campaigning uh, about um, legalizing um, same-sex marriage, essentially. And um, it was an unusual vote. Uh, the government uh, couldn't pass a law through Parliament in order to uh, enact the vote. And so what they did was instead they found a certain pot of money and they, they sent it to the Australian Bureau of, S of Statistics and the, the ABS, the, the Bureau, um, then essentially sent um, a survey form to every 18-plus uh, citizen in the country. And there was a simple question about whether we wanted uh, to uh, legalize same-sex marriage, uh, yes or no. And uh, by um, a margin of 61.6% to about 38%, um, we voted yes. And this is uh, very historic. Many people were, uh, on one hand, very offended that there was a, a survey about um, an issue that many people see as a fundamental issue of uh, human rights and equality. But on the other hand, um, uh, LGBTI people and their supporters were very uh, euphoric, very enthusiastic when the result came uh, out um, as such a positive result. And so uh, now it's just a plebiscite, which means that it doesn't automatically bind the government. And a number of, uh, of uh, people on the conservative end of the political spectrum have actually just voted against. Um, uh, that we've got two houses of parliament, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The Senate last night voted in favor of uh, same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and it was quite a lopsided victory. But there were still a number, of about 13 conservative senators who voted against it despite the outcome of the plebiscite, which is quite interesting because we assumed that many people would, would go with um, whatever the, the people of Australia had, had said that they wanted to to see um, whether they wanted it passed into law or not. But um, in any event, the next step is going to be within the next uh, perhaps couple of weeks, um, passage of the, of the bill or a modified bill through the, the lower house, the House of Representatives. Um, there's likely to be uh, what we call a conscience vote, so it's not going to be on party lines. It's going to involve people from um, you know, uh, across the spectrum, people on the, the relatively right uh, of center party uh, will be quite divided because a number of them are more libertarian in their sort of outlook. And uh, it seems almost certain that um, same-sex marriage will be a reality in Australia within the next uh, maybe month, um, possibly a week or two. Um, and um, so, 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 so now it's going quite quickly, but you had like a long time. I yeah. mean, th there were proposals for this law very many years. Why did it take so long time? That's a great question. So um, just the context first is that probably for about 10 years, um, at least 60% or so of, of Australians have thought that um, same-sex marriage should be legalized. Um, so why has the parliament sort of dragged behind public sentiment for so long? Well, um, it's... It's hard to say. It could be that there was a misreading of the public sentiment uh, among, <coughs> sorry, members of the sort of the conservative side of politics. Maybe um, people in particular electorates um, wanted to appeal to the <coughs> the most motivated voters in their electorate, the ones who might be, uh, you know, opposed to uh, this equality measure. Um, and it could just be that the conservative uh, parties have been dominated to some extent by the conservative wing of the conservative party. And in fact, uh, when the Labour Party was in power not too long ago, about uh, four years ago, um, they too were dominated by the, the right wing of the Labour Party. And so um, it, it could just be one of those things. It's just mm -hmm. uh, something that um, developed through the, 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 random, the randomness of the political process. Um, or maybe there is a, something um, in the argument that Australian politics is sort of inherently conservative because of the difficult uh, process of getting laws passed through mm. Parliament. And, and uh, other explanations as well might explain it, but um, it was actually that conservative wing of the Conservative Party that decided to, to send this to uh, a plebiscite, um, perhaps to delay sort of progress uh, on the particular issue. Um, but it's interesting that the plebiscite, you know, having uh, shown such strong pop you know, popular support for this measure, um, is now giving great momentum for the, 
uh, legalization of same-sex marriage. So ironically, it was a, a, a sort of a, a right of center motion that is going to actually lead to the conservative party of, of Australia, the, the liberal party is what they're called, um, enacting same-sex marriage. Mm. Uh, do, you, do you see this, uh, this moment now as a lucky moment for the democracy in Australia? Um, yes, so um, generally speaking, people um, see it as, as rather mixed in the sense that on one hand there's ambivalence about, or there's, there's anxiety about um, giving the vote um, to your fellow citizen on a matter of, of personal sort of equality, human rights. Um, and that's something that's been strongly expressed, especially by LGBTI people. Uh, on the other hand, um, you know, I would argue that um, the, you know, the democratic process um, was the only process that we had to do this. And so we were either going to go through um, a plebiscite or a referendum on one hand, or um, the parliamentary process. And both of those are, were going to be painful. They were going to dredge up all sorts of um, uh, anti-minority sentiment. Uh, and so um, ultimately you have to weigh up which of those democratic options was best. Um, the, the court, the High Court of Australia in, in 2013 decided to stay out of it. So that was not an option um, going through the, ju the judicial route. Um, so ultimately we needed a, a democratic um, uh, approach to this. We needed to pass a law through the parliament and the, the plebiscite procedure preceding uh, parliamentary vote um, I think it is a very positive thing in a number of ways and first of all because it gets the job done and secondly because it expresses a uh, sort of inclusion of uh, you know a, a historically excluded community even more than a parliamentary vote would have done so now we have a parliamentary vote plus uh, a sort of wide vote of people in, across the whole community um, basically two to one uh, expressing their support for for this um, uh, legalization of same-sex marriage. Mm. Do, you, do, you, do you think this will uh, increase the appetite to include the Australian citizens more in decision-making in the future? Um, it may actually it, it may well do that because um, you know it's been a long time since a successful referendum or plebiscite in this country um, uh, at the federal level, so not until not not since 1977, um, and so essentially there have been two generations that have never seen a successful constitutional referendum. Now um, this referendum, this plebiscite rather, um, has been successful. This is the first um, successful, uh, you know, uh, question put to the Australian voters, with the possible exception of 1997, but that was a more minor issue. Um, <clears throat> now um, it, it, this may show that. Um, Australians don't always say no. Um, this is the reason why people don't actually, uh, governments don't put questions to the Australian voters in constitutional referendums anymore because it's, it's a losing uh, proposition. Most people um, will vote no. It's a very difficult thing to pass a constitutional referendum. So maybe this will give a certain amount of impetus to the Australian uh, political class to, um, to use the referendum a little bit more often to be uh, to be confident that uh, given the right question on the right issue, um, people will say yes. Mm. Do you see anywhere in, in Australia on the local and regional level uh, interesting initiatives for increasing participation? Um, uh, in terms of um, pure direct democracy in referendums, uh, not very often. So every now and then, every few years, Somebody in, in the federal parliament will propose citizen-initiated referendums, but that never gets out of the committee stage, so the earliest stage of, of lawmaking. Um, and it's, it doesn't seem like it's a very likely outcome. Um, we are maybe a little bit conservative about the process that we like um, to follow in lawmaking in Australia. Um, it used to be very different in the 1890s, for example. Australia was a, a, an innovator in and democracy, um, only the second country to give women the vote, for example, um, the second country to have constitutional referendums uh, 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 mandated. But, um, but these days we're a little bit conservative and so it seems like uh, we're not going to get that sort of thing anytime soon. Um, uh, now, the, there, is, there is a lot of uh, use, um, as in the rest of the world, of citizens, juries, citizens, uh, assemblies, and so on. That's, uh, that's on the rise. Um, I think that's going to be something that increases uh, more and more. But in terms of referendums, in Australia we already um, have a referendum procedure. I don't see us um, necessarily having a great deal more of that. But as I said before, maybe this plebiscite will um, inspire a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. 
Last question. Uh, Australia is famous for having compulsory voting as yeah. one of the few countries in the world. Uh, how does this play into this kind of participatory turn or ID? Um, it's very complicated. There, I don't think there's a simple answer. So on one hand, you know, having everybody participate means that everybody is heard from. On the other hand, not everybody has an opinion. And so you might be hearing from people who don't actually know what, what uh, they think about a particular issue. Um, and so um, you know, we didn't have compulsory voting on this plebiscite. But if we had, the outcome might have been different or it might have been the same. Um, you know, either way, uh, it would have perhaps given the outcome a little bit more legitimacy because instead of 79.5%, it would have been more like 97% of people voting. Um, but, um, but I think 79.5 is actually quite a, a significant uh, turnout anyway. So, um, you know, in, in short, um, uh, compulsory voting is the perennial sort of discussion uh, among Australians and uh, political scientists in Australia. And there, there's no clear answer to, to how it affects our politics. Thank you very much. That's okay.